All right. All right, so many people with diabetes have problems with their feet, and Jamaica is among the leading countries in the world with the most amputations. I read this recently, and I was taken aback. You can prevent the serious problems by following a few basic guidelines, I'm told. Professor <laughs> Dalip Raghubar Singh. Excellent. Did I pronounce it right, yes, sir? Yes, yes. He's a good. diabetes expert, and he's here with us. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Hello. Smile Thank Jamaica. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> wow. When I heard this, I was taken aback because I, I didn't think we were even close. Yeah. But you made a point in the, in the article that says we are even more than Indonesia and India. Yeah, which, that, which, 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 is what, which is what surprised us and which also puts it in perspective. Because you're comparing like with like. To say that right. we are more than the US and UK and Europe, where healthcare generally is perhaps better right. um, is one thing. So, but that doesn't really tell us the story. Mm -hmm. When you compare other economies, other countries, territories that are similar, um, you find that it is when this, the, the, it really comes home right. to us. And a lot of our problems are predicated on some of our cultural practices. Allow me, if, if I may, to refer to a song by one of our DJs many years ago who said that young girls must wish, I, I can't say it, yeah. I can't speak the patois yeah. very well. But he says young girls must wear their size, mm -hmm. which was a very profound, profound statement and very clinically correct. Because he, by, just by observation, noted that women with size eight feet wanted to put them into size six shoes. And for diabetics, that is, is a crisis. So this is what we're talking about. This is right. diabetics. Yeah, for diabetics primary. It can also apply to the general population. And some of the things you want to, uh, wearing your size is one thing, but how do, you, how do you know when to buy your shoes? For example, when we get up in the morning, our feet are smallest because we are resting all night, mm -hmm. unless you're working through mm -hmm. the night. And at the end of the day, after walking around, running around. It swells a bit. That's right. So the best time to buy shoes for diabetics in particular, and for everybody, is between mid-morning to late morning, mm -hmm. when the feet is transitioning from the smaller size going up to the largest. So that in the morning when you put it on, you may, it may have a little bit of play, but not too much. Because what you don't want is the foot to be rubbing and abrading. Mm -hmm. And at the, in the evening, when it is, it, you, you find that it gets tight, you can develop calluses and corns. The other problem we have as a people is that we tend to want to treat at home. You want to cut calluses and corners, and no-no for diabetics. You don't want to prick blisters. Ulcers, people tend to put things like iodine, which sometimes blisters the skin. It is better you go quickly to a health facility, and thankfully, the Ministry of Health is making a valiant effort to have you know, health facilities available um, for even extended hours. Why, why, is, why is foot care so important or linked so much to diabetes, Prof? Good question. Um, one of the complications in diabetes is nerve problems, mm. diabetic neuropathy. And because the feet is furthest from the brain, which is the center of the nervous system, is the first place that sensation begins to go. Mm. So having said that, I want to take you into another practice that we have where we walk around barefooted, mm. especially outside. We had a patient who presented, in fact, he was smelling something and thought a rat was dead in the house, not knowing that he had stepped on a tumtack about a week ago. What? And it's maggots that had started on his feet. What? So I want to go, I want to add now that when patients, when diabetics in particular shower, it's good for them to pass their hand under their feet or use a mirror to look under their feet. Because had he been doing that, he would have discovered that a tack was there because you lose sensation in your feet, so you don't know. Oh my God. You, you understand? The other thing we do, it's common among our rural Jamaicans. And when Mr. Allen, you know, we must credit Mr. Allen, he's a passionate, you know, patriot and a Caribbean man. You know, he said, Prof, we must put something together for our people. One of the, and I told him, I say, especially for our rural people. And, you know, our farmers sometimes, they spend the entire day out in the field, they, in their feet are in water boots. Others who work throughout the day and have their foot in socks and shoes or stockings, as the case may be, 
When they come home, understandably, they want to get some relief. So they plunge their foot into a bath of hot water. Now, if you cannot test the temperature, what happens? It burns the feet outside. The other thing, too, as the diabetes progress, <clears throat> the vessels in the feet, they get thinner. So once you plunge it in hot water, they expand, they dilate, and they burst. So you have bleeding under the skin. Mm. Now, to add to injury, they tend to try to treat it at home, by which time gangrene set in, and of course you have to Dr. take, take, take this yeah. at all. You said one in every 1,500 Jamaicans? Yeah, diabetics. Diabetic? Yeah, diabetic. Every, one in every 1,500 diabetic. Yeah. And we have prevalence rate here like between 8 and 10 wow. percent. This is adult with 15 years and over. Mm. Wow. Women exceed men, 9.3 percent women, 6.4. And interestingly, I did a study in collaboration with the Florida International University in 10 schools in Jamaica. And already we see that our adolescents have 25 percent obesity and they are showing visible signs of chronic diseases, they have high cholesterol, blood pressure is higher than it should be for their age and stage in life. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are already diabetic. And you're saying 90% of all diabetics, the main cause is type 2 is obesity. Yeah, and 90% of diabetics worldwide. Um, the smaller percentage is type 1, which is the insulin dependent diabetic. Mm -hmm. Having raised that, you know, Ms. Harris, I want to take us along another path because when we discuss foot care, that's the external manifestation. Yeah. But there's a lot of internal you know, problems occurring because once an infection sets in to a diabetic, managing the blood sugar becomes very difficult. Mm -hmm. So if you're on tablets or oral hypoglycemics and lifestyle which is cardinal, you find you will have to change them and put them on insulin. And then you have a myriad of problems of controlling the blood sugar. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have a conference coming up, sir? We have a, a conference in the Faculty of Medical Sciences, which, start, which is on next week, Thursday and Friday. November but 7 and 8. Running along, an, analogous to that. It's not part of the conference, but it runs alongside is a diabetes exhibition in which we are highlighting the work of our former vice chancellor who did very important contributions to the diabetes work that we now have. The body of research that we have done, and we're talking about no lesser person than Sir Alistair McIntyre who died last year, and we feel that we must honor him as a faculty. And we'll also have some displays of some of the work that I have done um, in, with respect to bush medicine, foot care, elementary information that the public can understand in terms of you know, what is diabetes, who is at risk, and, and that kind of thing. Because type 2 diabetes runs in family. Mm -hmm. So if mama has it, it's likely that you will get it. And yeah. if you know that it is in your family, you take the appropriate actions to ensure that you don't develop it or you can even delay the onset. Okay. This says one amputee per 1,500 diabetics. Yes, yeah. Per 1,500, it means... So in every 1,500, at least right. one person Right, so I'm saying, it, so, so how many do we have overall? Like, diabetics. what is the number of, of, of diabetics? Well, remember, we have between 8 and 10% of the adult population, which is, between, which is 15 years and over. So yeah, oh. we can work on the figures. So it's plenty of people we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have... We have in the Caribbean a relatively high point prevalence of diabetes. Wow. All right, sir. Um, I know you were listening to us before, sir. Can I ask you a fun question, sir? Sure. Um, I, I hope I can answer. Would you rather be married to a 10 with a bad personality or a 6 with an amazing personality? I'll go with an 8 in between. <laughs> 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 and at least I'm happily married to a, a Jamaican who is in a between. <laughs> oh, she's in between. So she has a great personality. She drove me here this morning. Okay. <laughs> hey, oh, go on, because oh. you need somebody to drive your back. So make sure you say she's... Thanks for coming, sir. <laughs> so thank you for having me, for taking the risk of having me. I hope it was instructive and informative. It was incredibly there. instructive. Yes, thank you um, very much. And, and, and yeah, scary almost. It is. To be honest, it scary. Is. It is. And I'm, I'm, you know, my senior colleague and professor... Um, and mentor, Professor Morrison, and I were talking just on Heroes Day that he said, you know, we need to put together a scientific study. But because of our schedules, um, he said, you know, we could meet in January. So we're hoping to talk to some of the other stakeholders. But we need to get something that's scientific so we can yeah. speak with more, defi you know, more definitively. Mm -hmm. But just by glancing at the data that we have now, just by looking at Dr. Studies' presentations. Yeah. And let me say, before we close, <clears throat> 
amputation is the ultimate is, is the end result. Remember, people have ulcers that yeah, are man. constantly that are in, almost incurable yeah, because of the again the struggle they have with managing the blood sugar yeah. mm. that gives rise to infections and a myriad of problems. Yeah. It's like miserable. Yeah. Mm. Good miserable. morning, Chad. Yeah. Thanks for coming here. No, thank you very much. Yeah. God bless you. Professor Dali Bragabir Singh, diabetes expert, sharing a lot of information with us. Made to encourage girls of color, strengthen their self-esteem, and inspire positive self-image. After the break, we're going to check out a line of Jamaican dolls with a mission. All tens, by the way. Soon come. <laughs>